Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Susan Velakis, and I'm the Training Development Coordinator at NOW. And as such, I bring you these webinars on the third Thursday of each month. If you've missed any of them, you can find replays on our website, nowfoods.com forward slash webinars, or on the NOW YouTube channel. If you have any questions during the presentation today, just use the chat bubble on your screen to type in your question, submit it, and then we will respond to you with an answer by email. Today's presentation will run about 50 minutes and is presented by one of NOW's very own and one of my favorite guest presenters, Neil Levin. Neil serves as our Senior Nutrition Education Manager at NOW, and he is a nationally board-certified clinical nutritionist with a diplomat in Advanced Nutritional Laboratory Assessment. He is a professional member of the International and American Associations of Clinical Nutritionists, and also a member of the Scientific Council of the National Clinical Nutrition Certification Board. Neil serves on the board of directors of the Mid-American Health Organization, or MAHO as you may know it, and he provides a wealth of knowledge to our team at NOW when it comes to nutrition and dietary ingredients. So I know that he has some excellent information to share with you today. So with that, please join me in welcoming Neil Levin to introduce us to the wonderful world of herbs. Welcome, Neil. All right. Thanks, Sue. Hello, everybody. I'll just say hello real quickly and switch over to the slides. Uh, this is part two of our herbal category. As you know, in our catalog, we have like three columns approximately of herbal and botanical products. So there's a lot to go through. This is going to be part two of three. And uh, we're just going to recap some of the information from the earlier ones, uh, the, the previous presentation. Uh, a botanical, of course, is a plant or a plant part that we use for something. Uh, herbs are a subset of botanicals, a type of botanical. And products made from botanicals can be called herbal products, botanical products, phytomedicines. There's a number of terms for them. Uh, last time we talked about the introduction to botanicals and herbs, uh, crude herbs versus extracts, standardized versus non-standardized, marker compounds, which include both ID markers and strength potency markers, analytical testing and contaminant and adulterant testing. Uh, we also went through the adaptogen or tonic category, which includes this uh, <laughs> Fairly nice list of botanicals from American ginseng to rhodiola. So we're not gonna go through them all again now. Instead, we're gonna go to the next set of categories. And I did break the catalog section into categories to make it a little more manageable in terms of what they're expected to do. So in part two, we're gonna talk today about mood, stress, and sleep brain, memory, and nerves, free radical and cellular protection, joint and muscle support, as well as immune support herbs. So the, the first category is mood, stress, and sleep. Uh, I've included kava kava, passion flower, and saffron in these. And I am using the blue bar on the front of the labels to guide the categories. So there might be other ones that we have that you would fit this category that are not here because they're not in the herbs and botanicals section of the catalog. They might be in the mental section of the catalog. They might be in another area where we already talk about them. And you'll see that also when we're talking about specific herbs, uh, we might have some that are in a different category that we already talked about, like immune, that are not going to be repeated now because they're not in this section of the catalog, even though there might be similar herbs or even different formulations with the herbs. So just keep in mind that uh, we're, we're strictly going by the catalog categories here and the categories implied by the blue bars on the label themselves. 
So uh, kava, passion flower, and saffron are the three that meet that, this criteria for relaxation would be the claim on kava kava. Uh, kava is used for herbal peacefulness is our claim on the label or herbal relaxing blend on the other one. That one includes the organic eleuthero root. We did cover eleuthero in our adaptogen section last time. So uh, this is with the addition of uh, eleuthero to the kava extract in the capsules or the liquid which has the uh, pure kava root and gl vegetable glycerin and grain alcohol. Now, this is often used for relaxation uh, both physical and mental, by the way. So uh, it's it's not unusual that uh, people would use kava for feeling calm, feeling relaxed, feeling happy, and even relaxing muscles, which is actually something that my wife and I use kava for and have for a number of years, uh, trying to relax tense muscles. So uh, kava has the kava lactones, and there's other terms for those compounds, but they are uh, known to act kind of like alcohol on the brain, making you feel like you just had a beer or something, you know, not not out and out drunk. But uh, it it is used for a feeling of calmness. Uh, it does not necessarily shut down the brain or anything while making the brain calm. We've seen that also effect with uh, Things, things like amino acids like theanine might have a similar effect. Uh, they're using different biochemical pathways though. And we also have the passion flower, which is listed for uh, natural stress relief. So that's a kind of a nice claim. And uh, passion flower, uh, if you've ever seen the actual flower, it's a very beautiful and complex flower. Uh, it's a standardized extract for calm mood and constituents offer temporary relief from nervousness and feelings of stress. Uh, and this is something you'll often see combined with other botanicals. Passion flower is often combined with valerian root in sleep formulas, for example, to help you calm and reduce stress and nervousness when you're trying to go to sleep. So alleviating occasional minor tenseness and restlessness would be a good way to use this. And it can be combined with the relaxing amino acids or the relaxing herbs uh, as well. Uh, certainly passion flower is used in combination form quite often. Uh, in Canada, by the way, uh, we sell passion flower and uh, it's an active ingredient of the natural health products, which are the licensed registered products that require pre-market authorization from the government. Much like the uh, new uh, bill in Congress is intended to have products register and get authorization numbers to be able to sell products, uh, you know, which is very controversial. Uh, certainly something uh, our, our industry in general is not supporting. Uh, these labels may carry this claim that traditionally used in herbal medicine as a sleep aid in cases of restlessness or insomnia due to mental stress. So that's actually an official claim you can use on the Canadian label uh, just to give you a sense of how this is used. And this is something that came out last year and we're pretty excited about this particular product because it's an unusual type of saffron. Saffron, of course, is the little spice that's uh, kind of a, a reddish colored spice and it's usually sold in threads, uh, little stigmas from a flower of a crocus. And there's only like three of these threads in a crocus flower. They have to be hand-picked, by the way. And most companies offer an extract of the, these saffron stigmas, they're called, the little threads. Uh, we are offering the whole stigma powder, not an extract. So this is a fairly unique kind of thing. It's, it's more of a whole food version rather than an extract. 
what does saffron do? Uh, it helps to support positive mood, uh, relaxed attitude, restful sleep, balanced immune response, and free radical neutralizer. So it, it, because of its uh, constituents, which include pigments and uh, like, like carotenoids and, and polyphenols, you're, you're getting uh, the whole stigma and you're getting all of those benefits as if you were just eating the saffron and not taking an extract that might, it went, like we talked about last time, extracts might not be full spectrum, might not include all the constituents, all the potential benefits of the whole herb or the part of the herb. So using the whole saffron stigma powder, these little threads like you'd buy in the little jars in the store, uh, perhaps the most expensive spice in the world is saffron. So we have something that uh, there's actually a number of companies selling saffron, but it's very unusual to find a, a whole food version that's not extracting it. So uh, uh, again, it, it affects neurotransmitters. You're talking about serotonin and GABA specifically those pathways. So it affects mood, it affects snacking urges, uh, appetite to some extent. And it, it takes about a thousand flowers to produce an ounce of these saffron stigmas. And as I mentioned, as you see in the photo, these, these little red threads, they're, they're hand-picked basically with tweezers or by hand and uh, collected manually from the flowers. So very labor intensive. That's one of the reasons why it's so expensive. So the next category I have is brain, memory, and nerves. Uh, they're kind of interrelated, so I lump them together. And the three herbs I have in this section are bacopa, butterbur, and ginkgo biloba. I'm sure everyone's familiar with ginkgo, but uh, we'll go through the other ones, certainly. Bacopa extract, this is a fairly new product for us as well. Uh, but it's an Ayurvedic herb that's been used in East Indian health systems for centuries. And it does support nervous system health by protecting the brain against free radical damage. So free radicals, this oxidative damage type and, and, and other uh, similar damage caused by free radicals uh, is something that is known to affect the brain and nervous system health. Toxins, whether produced by internal metabolism or uh, exposure to chemicals or environmental triggers uh, can trigger the brain's free radical protective systems so that these substances don't damage the brain and the nerves. And we need support from a number of nutrients uh, the antioxidant type nutrients and, and the other free radical protection uh, nutrients as well. Uh, and Bacopa kind of feeds into that. Now ours is standardized. It's 40% bacocides as a minimum. And uh, for some people, Bacopa might give them a little GI discomfort. That's really not a very unusual side effect, but uh, it, it, it can interact with MAO inhibitors and a number of uh, drugs. So, uh, and people who have hyperthyroidism as well. So, you know, there are some significant cautions on here for people on medications. Uh, for most people, they're not gonna get GI discomfort from taking Bacopa. Another one that uh, I actually was uh, recommending this to a, a customer last week, uh, because this is unusual because we have a butter burr extract, but the base is feverfew. And this helps healthy blood flow to the brain and has neurological support. Uh, it contains actives called petacins, and petacins are bitter compounds uh, that are considered important, and that's why the, the barber is standardized to those compounds. So what do the compounds do? 
They relax blood vessels and smooth muscle tissues in the body. Uh, the uterus and the lungs are two of them that are indicated by both test tube and animal studies. And they also support healthy immune systems. Um, so when you're seeing relaxing blood vessels and having a role in neurological support, healthy blood flow to the brain, and that's one reason why we're including the fever few in there because fever few has a role in that regard as well. So this is kind of a combination formula based on butter burr, but we've fortified the butter burr with uh, similarly acting fever few herbal ingredients. Now, one thing that cu customers may have a concern about is butter burr has something called pyrolyzing alkaloids or PAs, which are substances that can cause liver damage if you take too much or too long. Only extracts that exclude the PAs should be used. And this is a screenshot I took from our specification sheet, which means that every lot of butter burr that we buy is tested for these. So you'll notice the first two are, uh, we pass an annual test with both gas chromatography and liquid chromatography coupled with mass spectrometer uh, for pesticide screens. So we're, we're making sure that there's, there's not uh, significant pesticide hits in there. Uh, which is a very good thing. And we're starting to see this on all of our botanicals, by the way. And in the last session, we mentioned the pesticide screening and some of the testing, but uh, we're now requiring an annual test for pesticide screening on botanical ingredients. And some require more frequent testing for, for example, like organics or things that are prone to have uh, glyphosate residue they do get more frequent testing. In some cases, it might be every lot. So just to let you know that we are doing pesticide screening on botanicals, including this one specifically from the butter burst specification. And the pyrolyzing alcohols have to be undetectable at a detection limit of three parts per million, which means that we're not gonna have a limit, uh, we're not gonna have an amount of PAs that would be considered harmful. And that allows us to have, have a safe product and also to export it uh, to other countries. Uh, for example, the EU has rules on PAs in ingredients that this would certainly comply with. And the third thing we have in this category is, in brain health is ginkgo biloba. And the reason it's believed to help with brain health is uh, because it, it's believed to help the microcirculation through the capillaries to help get enough blood flow to the, blood, to the brain. So ginkgo, as the slide indicates from the expanded commissioning monograph, uh, which is the German monograph, uh, it must be standardized for the intended benefits. We're using a 50 to one standardized extract that's standardized to a minimum 24% ginkgo flavoglycosides and 6% terpene lactones. Because the scientific literature does not support clinical benefits of other concentrations of ginkgo. Now you'll notice this formula has a base of 200 milligrams of ginkgo leaf. 60 milligrams is not gonna fill a capsule. So obviously we have to fill it with something. Kinko leaf powder is a natural compound we're using to do that. And here's the double strength, which includes the organic eleuthero in the base. Now here's a longer list, the free radical and cellular protection list. This includes the bilberry, the cherry products, the elderberry, graviola, green tea extract, hawthorn berries, noni, olive leaf extract, oregano, and pot arco. So this is a much longer list because this is a much broader category. 
So going through them alphabetically, the first one is the bilberry complex, which is a free radical scavenger. It, it, we've, uh, it's got beta carotene in there added and riboflavin B2, because that provides some support for the eyes, which is the traditional use of bilberry products. Bilberry, by the way, is a type of blueberry. And so ours is standardized to a minimum of 25% total anthocyanins. You will also see bilberry extract in our Ocu support formulas. So that's something uh, to recognize that you know, some of the similar ingredients this is kind of a simplified version of one of those formulas, uh, including the carrot powder, of course, for the uh, carotenoids in there as well. So it is a free radical scavenger. The anthocyanins, which are a type of polyphenol, are uh, the pigments, the blue pigments that give the health benefits. And there is a small study suggesting that eating bilberries can even support healthy gums, according to the National Institutes of Health. Now we have two cherry products. One is the cherry concentrate, a 10 to one superfruit concentrate. And this is using uh, cherry fruit prunus maximoisi, kind of a interesting name there. But uh, this is a 10 to one concentrate where you're taking the cherry fruit concentrate. And we've also got a 50 to one concentrate. The other one's a 10 to one concentrate. This one is grown in the USA. And this is a sour or tart cherry. So some people want the regular cherry, some people want the tart cherry. Uh, they both contain the anthocyanins. Uh, cherries have that dark reddish color. So the pigments in there are very valuable. They neutralize free radicals and supply the color. Uh, pigments like carotenoids and anthocyanins and proanthocyanins are phytochemicals, are plant chemicals that are pigment-based and have health benefits in people. Now, we're not making a specific claim on these other than free radical fighting. And you see the same on the elderberry concentrates. Uh, this is the free radical scavenger. It's a 10 to one concentrate. And black elderberry, Sambucus nigra, is believed to provide protection against oxidative stress and modulate immune responses. What a lot of people don't realize is that the immune system is highly dependent on oxidative stress as a signal of weakness in cells, but also free radical fighters is the term used in, in these kind of products. Uh, actually protect cells as well as stimulating an immune response. So protecting against oxidative stress modulates immune responses. Remember the immune system even uses oxidation as a weapon as a, and as a demolition tool if there's damaged tissues. And free radical scavengers, free radical fighters, which are all related terms, are protective and help control the scope of the weaponry and demolition tools used by the body in its natural processes. So elderberry has the antioxidant vitamins A and C and the anthocyanins as well. The next product is graviola. We actually have two graviola products. The uh, 500 milligram and the double strength 1000 milligram in a sustained release tablet. And they're both labeled as free radical scavengers. And when we first came out with Graviola, we did not make any claims for them. And we were getting some very strong testimonials, which of course we don't use those type of testimonials in our marketing or on our webpage. But uh, the active constituents, in graviola seem to support healthy cell growth and function and protect cells against free radical damage that can have negative effects on health. 
So these free radical scavenging properties uh, are really uh, some of the key to how graviola works. And I also want to mention that graviola, also known as soursop, uh, is something that there are people in Central America with a genetic issue who get neurological damage from eating a diet that's high in the graviola fruit. But this is the leaf, so it's not considered associated with that issue. Uh, if people look this up on the internet, though, they might see some confusion between the Central American fruit and, and people with a genetic predisposition and people in the South American uh, tree leaf that is used in this kind of product. And green tea, of course, is something that uh, is a, a botanical and, and very popular. Uh, we have a couple products in this category, the green tea extract, 400 milligram, and that includes uh, 60 milligrams of vitamin C added to it. And we have the extra strength thermo green tea, which contains per capsule 700 milligrams of green tea extract. There's also different amounts of EGCG in there. Uh, the one on the left, the 400 milligram, has 40% cat catechins and about 32 milligrams of naturally occurring caffeine. The stronger extract on the right, which is half EGCG, so it's it's more like, uh, I, I forget the exact percentage, but something like 80% uh, polyphenols and half EGCG, it has only seven milligrams of naturally occurring caffeine because it's been uh, so much more concentrated for these uh, catechins and other polyphenols, including EGCG. So these polyphenols are, uh, and there's a long list of them. I'm not gonna go through all these uh, names and initials. They're all very similar compounds. These catechins, they're called, or catkins in some people, seem to be responsible for many of the proposed benefits of green tea and the green tea actually does what raspberry ketones were alleged to do uh, years ago by Dr. Oz and other folks like that. Uh, having an effect on fat oxidation, being able to burn fat for calories through a specific enzyme pathway uh, to increase lipolysis or the breakdown of fats in the body. So green tea extract has been shown in studies to help reduce fatty acid production by inhibiting the, the synthesis of fatty acids, uh, inhibiting the production of new fatty acids in the body, make the production of fat in the body, but also helping you break down fats and turn them into energy. So that's what raspberry ketones were alleged to do. Uh, the science was very weak on them, the dosing was immense. It was over a kilo a day based on animal studies that humans would have to take to do that. And it was just not a practical solution when green tea worked on the same mechanism that they were saying worked with the raspberry ketones. So that's why green tea is so popular because it's got these free radical fighters that also uh, to help you burn fat and turn it into calories where you, where you have energy and also prevent accumulation of a lot more fat in the body because it's helping to reduce that mechanism of creating new fat, fatty acid synthase. Now hawthorn berry is in this section. Hawthorn leaf and flower extract is not. And the reason why is there are different claims made on these. These are different materials. Uh, Hawthorne berries have long been used as a free radical scavenging uh, material, but they do not have the same benefits uh, as the leaf and flower extract that are used in, for, for example, our uh, blood pressure health formula. Uh, there are different claims on different parts of a plant, of a botanical. So this one is free radical scavenging but they do not make the same cardiovascular claims on the berry 
as are made for the leaf and flower extract, which is really in most cases the preferred, though a lot of people like the old school berries and we even use berries in combination with the leaf and flower extract in some of our formulas. Another free radical fighter is the noni, which is the uh, South Pacific, typically Hawaiian sourced uh, fruit. And it has bioflavonoids and other phytonutrients, unique fatty acid compounds that make it a good free radical quenching material. So the free radical fighters in there help with supporting healthy immunity and healthy cellular responses, keeping cells healthy. When we're talking about keeping cells healthy, we're often talking about things like uh, keeping them uh, from being damaged and anti-aging and all of those kind of benefits. And free radical scavenging applies to the olive leaf products as well. We have different strengths of them, 6%, 18%. So regular strength and triple strength, basically. And again, since they have the ability to scavenge superoxides and hydroxy radicals, which are free radicals, they act to help uh, immune response modulation in people. Uh, the human immune response is, as I mentioned earlier, at, at least partially dependent on uh, oxidative stress and reducing oxidative stress. And oregano capsules, this, this is the oregano leaf. It is not the separate oil of oregano or oregano oil. Uh, our oregano products are oregonum vulgare, which is Latin for wild oregano. So this is the species that's known as wild oregano. It's actually a, a type of marjoram, if you're familiar with spices. And it's, uh, the compounds are often extracted in the oregano essential oils, which of course we sell uh, both in capsule form and liquid form. And some of them are, are strong essential oils that are not labeled for internal use. And we also have the uh, pau de arco, which is the uh, inner bark of a tree that grows in South America, typically Brazil. And it contains compounds that support healthy cell growth and have free radical scavenging properties. So that's the category we're looking at, free radical scavenging. And that helps with cellular health, that helps with anti-aging, uh, that helps with uh, keeping cells healthy, keeping systems healthy in the body. So there's a number of ways to do that. And people might choose one or another of things from this category because of its historical or traditional use as much as the actual a list of constituents in them. But we, you know, we are talking about, for example, on the extract on the right, supporting healthy cells, keeping cells healthy. And the last thing I have in this category is the propolis plus extract. And uh, the reason I listed is that it is known to contain healthy occurring bioflavonoids. And it, this is a list of ingredients when you're looking at this includes a uh, forsythia, licorice roots, slippery elm, propolis, cloves, golden seal, myrrh, echinacea. So it's kind of a combination of the traditional Chinese type formula with the forsythia and licorice roots and adding the uh, American and Western herbs, echinacea, uh, is an American, uh, Golden Seal is an American herb. Uh, it, you know, it's a nice combination of all of these to give you a wide range of uh, things that help with digestion. It, 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 it's very varied, but we, it's really based on 
free radical fighting in a, to a large extent and the, and the bioflavonoid and other constituents in there. So we don't actually make a claim on this particular product, but it's an interesting product. The next section I have, uh, it seems kind of short for this category, but because we're looking purely at the urban botanical section, it's the joint and muscle support. And this includes devil's claw, turmeric and curcumin, which is the constituent from turmeric and willow bark. And I'm mostly gonna be talking about the turmeric and curcumin because there's some complexity there that, that should be explored. So first we'll look at devil's claw, which is a traditional African herb. And it has naturally occurring compounds, including not only phytosterols, but flavonoids and phenolic acids, uh, these free radical fighters. And so they help support joint comfort by promoting a healthy response to everyday joint stress because of the phytosteroids and phytosterols and the flavonoids that are in there. And this is the selection of turmeric and curcumin products that are in this category. And uh, just to clarify, turmeric is the spice, the plant, the root that curcumin is the active constituent of. So why do we have varied formulas here? Well, let's start with the liquid turmeric extract. This is a certified organic turmeric root that's been extracted it, it, per one milliliter serving, which is about a dropper. There's about a, equivalent to taking about a thousand milligrams of the herb or a couple capsules and it's water and alcohol base, which is how they extract it. Now this is prepared by a cold drip percolation of a dried organic turmeric root in organic cane ethanol and distilled water. Uh, they use about eight and, uh, and a third pounds per gallon. They put it in the water and alcohol, then they percolate it, and they end up with the one-to-one -one herb extraction ratio, which is a typical way of making uh, an herbal extract, by the way, these liquid extracts. A lot of the standardized herbs that we make and that we offer are actually produced in ways like this and then dried. Some of them can be self-dried if they contain enough material. A lot of times they are sprayed onto a a starch like a maltodextrin. That's why you'll see that combination on some of our herbal extract labels. So curcumin is believed to be the active constituents of turmeric. There are three curcuminoids that represent curcumin and they protect against free radical stress. They positively affect histamine levels. Histamine is involved in a number of body processes, including uh, histamine, which is uh, you, something the body regulates in terms of uh, an immune response would be one thing, an inflammatory response. Histamine is part of that response and being able to modulate that is important. Uh, protecting the liver from toxic compounds because of its free radical fighting uh, ability. It also promotes normal blood clotting and healthy circulation. So there are some benefits and curcumin is the known active for turmeric. When we talk about marker compounds, it's the marker compound, but it's uh, also the active, not just an identity compound. So we know it's a powerful free radical neutralizer that helps balance immune function, but it's also known to have poor bioavailability. Now that is not true if you're taking turmeric. Turmeric actually has very good bioavailability because of its what they call an amorphous matrix. The, the way that curcumin appears in turmeric is soluble, is, is bioavailable. 
when you extract curcumin, you're taking it out of its soluble matrix and making it insoluble. And then you have something that's poorly bioavailable, and that's why there are so many different forms of things attached to curcumin because they're trying to restore the original solubility that it had in the turmeric itself. So the three bioavailability problems are, uh, first of all, the bottom one, limited solubility and absorption in when it's taken out of the food matrix. That's not common, by the way. Uh, most nutrients actually absorb better when they're removed by from food. That's why we digest foods to get to nutrients. Curcumin's the opposite, so it's an unusual instance here. Uh, rapid glucuronidation and elimination. Glucuronidation is liver detox. The liver tends to want to get rid of certain types of things bonded to curcumin to help it absorb. So some of the things that are used to make curcumin more bioavailable actually backfire and make it uh, less effective, where it becomes rapidly detoxed and eliminated from the body before it has a chance to affect uh, inflammatory markers, muscle comforts, joint comforts, all these other things. And instability hydrolysis, it, it, it tends to be uh, broken down either in the digestive tract or in the liver quickly. So one solution to that is the Curcu Fresh product. It's, it's a, kind of an interesting product because it retains the original solubility of turmeric. They just press turmeric into a fresh juice. You just juice a turmeric root and dry it. That's it. So instead of the dried root extracts that are uh, where you get the curcumin, pore solubility, you now have something that is dramatically higher, up to 40 times bioavailability compared to the 95% curcuminoid products. So you have, you have A, a whole food version of curcumin. B, you don't have to add anything to help it reabsorb because you've ruined the absorption by taking it out of the original matrix. You keep it in the original matrix. That solves the problem. So now you have this huge increased bioavailability, which is real because it's not relying on tricks that backfire in terms of liver trying to get rid of it as quickly as it goes in, which I've seen for certain other forms. So even though it's only got 4% total curcuminoids, when you're talking about 40 times the bioavailability compared to the 95%, you now have something in a couple caps a day that can do a lot more than the regular curcumin. It's minimally processed, it's a dried juice, it's water soluble. And it has all the components, carbs, proteins, lipids of turmeric roots, juice. So solvent-free, naturally dispersed in a soluble matrix, you can only get that from a fresh but not a dried turmeric. So you don't need to come up with all these weird strategies to resolubilize and enhance bioavailability like is so common. And looking at these uh, electron microscope photographs, you could see the difference between curcumin fresh and crystalline curcumin, and that's why there's a difference in solubility. So curcumin fresh also gives you free curcumin. That's the form that will cross the blood-brain barrier. That's the form that is that you will get from taking the uh, Long Vita uh, curcumin brain product. You're really getting almost the same thing from this. It's patent pending from India. It's a whole food version. It, it re remains in the natural complex from the turmeric root. Has to be made from fresh juice. It's not an extract. It's solvent free. Can only be harvested in late winter, early spring. 
and about 40 times the bioavailability of a 95% curcuminoid dried extract. And these are three different doses, but it really shows the same bioavailability curve on all three. Uh, how much gets in is, is really, you know, pretty similar. Uh, three doses, but that bottom line right above that baseline, that, that the one with the uh, uh, kind of gray line with the, the little uh, asterisk over it, that's how much absorbs of normal 95% curcuminoid. The 95% curcumin products absorb very, very poorly. So again, free curcumin, it helps regulate proteins, especially in the brain, uh, helps you respond to oxidative and physiological stress, and also helps with immune challenges that require the free radical protection of curcumin. Now we have another curcumin in this category that's worth talking about, curcumin phytosome. This one, they have enhanced the absorption of the extract, the, the curcumin that's been extracted by using a phytosome, which is uh, you know, like a lecithin type compound. So we see it increases absorption by about 19 times. You know, the other one we just looked at was about 40 times. So it's not quite as much. Uh, and we see that the bioavailability, uh, in different ways of measuring it, this is only about seven times, but it works really well. This is actually the one I take. And again, the bioavailability, the area under the curves here we're looking at, uh, high dose, low dose, or regular curcumin, taking several times the amount of 95% curcumin gives you that bottom dotted line amount of absorption, 2,100 milligrams. Taking 500 milligrams of Mariva gives you the top one, which is several times the area the area under the curve is the absorption amount. So you could take less than a quarter as much actual curcumin and get several times the absorption is what it's showing. And they looked at the mobility and the pain scores of people treated with Mariva, one gram a day to two 500 milligram a day. And they had highly significant results in pain and walking sores over a three month period. So it is functionally effective. That's the reason I take it. I, I know I've, I've seen some, a lot of studies I can't even mention because they're medical nature, uh, how good this particular material is. And the last thing in this category is the willow bark. Uh, researchers have identified these compounds, salicin or salicylic acid is known to help respond to uh, physical stresses. Polyphenols and flavonoids also contribute to the activity of willow bark. So we're actually making a claim, temporary relief from minor pain of overexertion and is gentler than some of the pharmaceutical synthetic alternatives. And the last category I have for you today is immune support with five botanicals, Andrographis, Astragalus, Boswellia, Cat's Claw, and Echinacea. Now, Andrographis has often been called the Asian Echinacea uh, as a relation to its effect on a healthy and balanced immune system response. This is the herbal that's used uh, the way that echinacea has been used in America, but has been used in China, India, Southeast Asia, uh, Siberia. And andrographis helps to support healthy balanced immune response and modulates the production of immune cells. So it'll stimulate or reduce immune cells. Another, uh, Fairly well-known and popular uh, East Asian herb is astragalus. 
This is the root extract standardized. By the way, standardized astragalus is pretty unusual. So on the left, you have just astragalus root ground up. On the right, you have a standardized astragalus extract, which is very, very unusual. And astragalus root is an herbal tonic that has flavonoids and polyphenols, has been shown in studies to support uh, enhancements of immune cells, uh, T cells and natural killer cells, for example, and healthy immune function. Uh, next one is Boswellia. A Boswellia, which is frankincense, by the way, this is the thing people should be taking internally, not the frankincense essential oil. Uh, there's no safety and efficacy data on the essential oil, frankincense. Uh, but Boswellia zerata, frankincense, this is the gum resin from that, where that the uh, it's an extract of that rather than the essential oil itself. It helps affect enzymes involved in tissue maintenance. And again, a immune response that's balanced to normal metabolic stress, wear and tear, et cetera. Again, here's a standardized extract with turmeric root extract, the 95% curcuminoids, and the turmeric root powder itself as a base, as a filler. So it's a Boswellia turmeric combination, really. And this is the uh, double strength, which does not have the extra ingredients, but is in a soft gel, which may enhance absorption or be easier to swallow for some people. Cat's claw is another one. Uh, this is something that's, for, again, another, again, another South American herb that's traditional. And there are chemicals that could stimulate the immune system, according to WebMD. So we're, we're claiming herbal support on one and immune system support on the other. The extract, is, it has a stronger claim, obviously. And echinacea, uh, last item in this category, uh, traditionally used to support immune system health. This is all from Now Foods uh, article on this, by the way. Uh, there are three main types. There's at least seven types of echinacea, but Three are traditionally used in herbal systems, purpurea, angustifolia, and pellita. Uh, the phenolic compounds are the main actives in there, Echina uh, the echinacea compounds. There are different compounds predominating in the angustifolia and pellita than the purpurea species. So uh, there's different uses on the two major ones, angustifolia and purpurea. Now purpurea tends to be the main one used for immune response, free radical neutralizing, healthy immune challenging, uh, while the uh, main compound in the angustifolia and the, and the pellita forms uh, help scavenge free radicals and help with healing systems, but are not quite as good on general immunity. So purpurea is the preferred species for immunity, and the angustifolia and uh, pellita, which is, you know, pellita is not as commonly found, is, are more commonly used for free radical fighting and healing. But again, we're seeing extracts of purpurea roots, even greater levels of free radical scavenging capacity because they're total phenolics. They're, they're free radical fighting antioxidant related compounds. So purpurea really tends to be the preferred one for immunity. So you'll see we have the liquid extract that includes both the, the main forms, angustifolia and purpurea. So kind of a traditional formula. When we go to the capsule on the right, it's strictly the purpurea, which is uh, what people really are looking for more when they have immune challenges. We do recommend not to consume high amounts for more than a couple of weeks per month. 
We also include the Papuria root with Golden Seal, St. John's, and Bone Set Herb in, in this liquid immune support formula. And Echinacea Golden Seal Plus, which includes, a, and there's actually some of the same herbs we use in our uh, Ojibwa teas, the red clover, burdock uh, things that are used for kind of traditional blood cleansers. So, you know, this is, again, an interesting formula because it does more than just the echinacea golden seal. And golden seal is believed to work by its berberine compound, which is similar to what's in Oregon grape roots. Again, here's a capsule version, equal amounts of echinacea purpurea root and golden seal root. So that concludes the categories here. I'm going to give you a sneak peek. The next session we're going to do is going to talk about these categories, cardiovascular and blood sugar, GI urinary detox, men and women's products, and products where you just don't make any claims for various legal or scientific reasons. Well, we will be looking forward to that. So thank you, Neil, for an excellent presentation once again. This is a great series, and I'm glad everyone could join us, and I thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us. Our final segment of this on part three will be on August 18th, so just watch your email for login details, and uh, we hope to have you back with us so you don't miss the final chapter. So thanks again, everyone, and uh, have a great day.